Today we're going to be discussing Blazor component parameter types. I'm briefly going to explain how each one works with some code snippets. I've got a couple of diagrams as well to help illustrate some of the more confusing ones. I'm also going to mention in what sort of scenarios you might use each one. The idea here is to make you aware of what sort of tools Blazor provides so that you can make the best decisions when faced with a problem. Source code I use in this tutorial is going to be in, uh, in a link in the description below. Right, let's get started. So our first one is the standard component parameter. This one is the one that you've used if you've done even the slightest bit of work in Blazor. Uh, the architecture ready is the parameter is defined in the component itself and we have the, the parent pass its value into that component. Uh, a good way to look at components and the, the relationship with their parameter or good analogy is if you think about one of those toys that kids often play with uh, where you have a box and the box has different shaped holes cut into the box and there's different pieces of wood that match those shapes that the, the child can put into, into the box through the different slots. That fits the, the component parameter analogy excellently. Um, whereas each of the blocks that the kid puts in is the value being passed into the component or the, the argument um, being passed into the component. The, the holes in the box that relates to the actual parameter with the shape of each hole being the type of data is allowed, that's allowed to be put into the box. And then the box itself is, is the component itself. And then the space outside or the, or the child playing with it is the... Uh, component or the page consuming or using the component. So if you can sort of keep that in mind as we go through and, and, and speak about the different types. The standard one, we have a component here. I've defined a, a card component. It's got a title and some card text. Um, uh, there's just a property and we decorate the property with a parameter attribute. Uh, and here is the string. So this is our shape for the box. And then for the page that's consuming it, all we do is declare our card component and we can set the card text to here is some card text and here it is displayed and so forth. Very little to say about this one, it's pretty straightforward. There's only two things worth mentioning here that we can give something a default value to say that um, if, you, uh, if the consumer doesn't um, actually set the property, we can add some default things. So um, let's say uh, uh, this is the default text. And then if, uh, if it's not set up here in the, when we actually use that component, the text will take on the default value. Then you can also um, try and set a parameter uh, on the other side of it. Instead of making it optional, you can set a parameter as mandatory. So we can set it to be editor required. This doesn't actually throw any exceptions. So it's kind of mandatory in the sense that it just, just gives a warning. Um, here you can see it says that the car component expects a parameter of that. I can still run it, won't be a problem with, with uh, during compilation. To completely enforce the, uh, ensure that the value is, is set in addition to that, you would ideally check the value of the card title at uh, by overriding it on the parameter set. And if it's null or not equal to the value you're expecting, you could then throw an exception. Root parameters are largely just an extension of the standard component parameters. The only difference being is that you can pass your arguments in through the URL instead of defining them directly in the parent using that component. So here, for example, we have declared a product ID and then up here, we in the routing of the page, we declare uh, matching the name of that parameter and declare what type it is. Then we can actually pass our values through in a routing so that if I click this, this will go into our product page over here, specifying the value of whatever we pass through in our URL. And just to prove this, I can change this URL to be to I can change the URL to be you know, whatever value, whatever value I like, and that'll be the value being passed into the product ID of this parameter. This gives you an easy way to change the content of your page based on the routing the user uses. 
So our third type is cascading parameters. In the example here, I have a page, this white section here, which has a component, an outer panel, and then another component, this white section, which is a themed card, and then another themed button, which is our fourth component in the hierarchy. In this scenario, I'm setting the value of my theme in the outermost component, the page. So here I've set a variable called theme mode and I've set it to lights mode. Each of these components has a property named theme and all I'm doing is I'm passing the value down of, of theme mode down into outer panel. This will set the value of theme and then pass declare another component theme card and pass the value down again to theme card. Theme card actually makes use of it, which we're using it to style it in white mode. Here it's setting the class, the CSS class, and it's displaying the name of the theme, but then it passes it down into the theme button. And then the theme button, all it does is it's checking the value of theme and it's saying, if it's equal to dark mode, style the button like this, otherwise style the button like this. So this approach is pretty tedious and it's not particularly flexible. So let's see how we would do this using cascading parameters. So in our previous architecture, we would have the outermost component set a parameter in its child component. This would set its child com the value in its child component. This would use the parameter, but it would also set e the parameter value in its child component, which would then use it as well. So in our new architecture using the cascading parameter, it looks more like this. Our page is going to set one cascading value and we'll set it equal to dark mode or light mode or whatever we want. This outer panel, seeing as it doesn't actually make use of that value, we're not styling that. We don't, we don't have to declare anything here whatsoever. It doesn't even need to know about it. The theme card, we just define the cascading parameter that we want to use. And then the theme button, we need to define the cascading parameter because it's used within the component. A cascading parameter will automatically pass this value down to any components using a cascading parameter of the same name in the hierarchy. Even if we had 20 of these and none of them were defined with a cascading parameter and just the last one would, that value would be passed all the way down, saving us lots of effort and lots of work. In order to set the value, we need to make use of Blazor's built-in uh, component, the cascading value component. And then this wraps around the initial one that we want to pass it down through, our initial component, in this case, the outer component. And we need to set the value of what we want to pass to. So, so let's change this all to dark mode. Right, this needs to match to a predefined private variable. So I can't set the value directly or the string directly. I need to match it to a variable. So, cool, let's run this now. And this is set to dark mode, uh, so light mode. Let's just do this. We'll hit the hot reload, hot refresh, and then refresh the page. And now we'll see both this has changed to dark mode and the theme button as well had, has swapped. So once again, let's just review. So at the very topmost layer, we are setting the value and only on the child components that make use of it do we declare the cascading parameter and it will receive that value from wherever it was set right at the top of the tree or wherever down the hierarchy that that value was set. This, make, this is, makes things really good use for uh, user settings, so like themes, um, there's uh, user authentication, things like that, because you're setting it at the very highest level. There is way more detail to ca cascading parameters. You can set it right at the root level in the services layer. Our next type is generic parameters. This really is, if you know how generics work in C-sharp, uh, this is really just the Blazor equivalent of that. It allows you to define a component and then have the parent denote the type of parameter that is going to be passed through to the component. Here we have a type parameter up here and this pretty much says that it needs to be the type of the parameter needs to be defined. In this scenario we've got a I enumerable of, of, of type T item meaning that we can 
we can have a list or an array or anything that can be enumerated through. And then the, the outer component can define what type of items this takes. This will just list a loop through each item and then display it in a list. I've got two lists here, one making use of integers. And here we set the type and saying it can only receive ints. And on the second one, it can only receive strings and we're passing a list of strings and a list of uh, items. Then lastly, we have the event callback parameter. In my opinion, this is by far the most useful and the most important. So even if you've forgotten everything else I've said in this, in this video, make sure you understand this one. This is gonna be the most useful to you. This is really where we reverse the direction of the data that the component uses. So in all our other situations where the parameter is passing data into the component itself, here we're passing data from the component back up to the parent. So back to our toy box analogy, this would be where a wooden peg would be getting spat out of the box and the child playing outside of the box would sort of be grabbing the, the peg as it got spat out of the box. Um, if we have a look at our, we have a look at our architectural view for our example we're going to use, a user's gonna select a item from the drop, drop, drop. A user's gonna select an item from the drop down list and the drop down list component is going to inform the page of which item was selected from that list. So let's go and do that in code. So here I've got my drop down list razor component over here. There's just a for loop that goes through and populates some options um, for each item in the list. What we want to do is we want to create a new property, um, a new string property, which is going to be the value that is um, selected. So we're gonna do this, it's gonna be an event, so we're gonna use the on prefix, so on item selected, so it's gonna happen when the item is selected. We're going to create an on change event here and we're gonna map this to a new method which we're gonna create and we're gonna say on select changed. What are we going to do? We're going to create a new method over here and we're gonna say void on select changed and there is going to be change event args. So this really is gonna add in some, some sort of values here just to check that, that the value selected is not null. So the value selected from the dropdown list is gonna get passed here as args.value and we're gonna set a local property on selected item. But the important thing here is we need to raise an event callback this on selected item. This should be event callback, defining the type of value that's going to be. We need to also attach the parameter attributes to this so that it can be accessible from outside this component. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on item selected dot invoke. We're going to invoke that and what we need to do is we need to as the uh, argument to this method, we need to pass the thing that was selected, the value that we want to pass up to the parent. So here we go. Right, so in the parent page that's actually using this dropdown, I have two dropdown lists declared, one with a list of superheroes. So here we have, and another one with a list of supervillains. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to listen for the event callback from the superheroes list. So here it is, it already knows that we've got it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new method to respond to that event happening. So I'm gonna call it superhero selected. Right. So over here we'll make a new method called private void. One, two, here is selected. And the value that will get passed is gonna be a string. This is denoted by the type of event callback that we've got here. So if this was, if you wanted to pass an object, so if this was a class, let's say we actually had a superhero class, for example, you would define this as superhero class and the value that was be getting passed through here would be of type superhero. So in our case, um, let's just call 
equals hero righty. And we're just going to set our local variable superhero. Cool. That's it. And let's see if this works. Cool. So if we select item from our drop down list, you'll see it's getting populated here. Once again, this orange denotes everything that's happening in this in this component, whereas everything in the white area is the parent or the, the page that's using it. You'll notice if I change values in the um, in the villain drop down list, the villain drop down list is still raising the event callback. The difference is on the page there is nothing being listened to. So we are not actually listening or responding to that on item selected for these super villains. So that's why the, the go back to our child toy analogy, the toy is getting thrown out of the wooden box. Um, the child is just not caring about it. Child's walked away, not, not listening to this one, but the child is sort of catching that, that wooden peg for this one. Right, so this is the one you really need to remember. This just has so many uses and you will be using it everywhere. And uh, it could be, you could have a component that has form information when they click the submit button and you've, you've made a request to your service and the request happens successfully. You may want to raise an event callback to notify that the page that the submission has, has been successful. If you've got a paging component and every time you toggle a page, you may want to alert the page above to say, now refresh the data that the page is showing. Uses are pretty endless with this. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos similar to this, I've got C-sharp videos and I've got more Blazor videos. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one.